Hi, uh, I'm Tom, and this is a talk I gave yesterday at UX Camp Brighton to some uh, UX designers about Git without going into any technical details. Um, it's designed to be a conceptual overview, and I just want to run through it very quickly now uh, in case you are struggling with Git or would like to know a bit more about the, uh, the different terms. The first thing to know is that Git looks after your files. It works best on text files, but can actually work with any kind of file. More specifically, it looks after different versions of your files. That is, Git is a version control system. Uh, it handles versions over time. It also stores the history of a project, which means it's really useful for getting back to where you were uh, at some point in history. And on top of that, you get backups for free because in Git, every member of your of the team you're working with has a full copy of the project, which means if you lose some data, you can easily get it back from them. It's also pretty simple, but if you're coming from the world of SVN or CVS, there can be some confusing things because the same terminology is used to mean different things. I'll try and explain that when I get to it. The other thing to note is that Git is not GitHub. GitHub is hosting for things you do with Git, for your projects that you that you use Git with. Uh, it's not Git itself. Git is a version control system. GitHub is source code hosting. So let's take a look at how you might work now. Um, initially, you might just work with a file and you'll make changes to it. But at some point, you want to save a particular point uh, and move on so, uh, so that you don't make any further changes to that file. So then you create a new file and you work on say A2 in this case, and then further on you work on A3, um, and you can always get back to A2 uh, and A. But then you might want to do an experiment and you'll uh, kind of branch off and create a new file because it's some, you don't want to keep it in the same vein uh, as before and you're just trying something out, but equally you need to keep the, what you were doing originally. Now you have four files um, and pretty quickly this can escalate till you have a horror situation like this and file names that look like this. The ideal situation really would be that you only work on the current status of a project, but that you can get to any of the other ones if you really wanted to. If you needed to get back to one of those earlier versions, you could do. This is what Git, Git lets you do, but we'll get back to this shortly. Now we'll go through some jargon to do with Git. Um, we'll take a look at some verbs, some important things you need to know. Uh, just so that you have a reference if you need to get back. Uh, if, you need, if you're talking to someone uh, who's talking to you about Git and you uh, need a frame of reference, hopefully this will help you. Uh, from now on, all the uh, important verbs in Git are in pink. If it's in pink, it means something in Git and, uh, and it's worth taking note of. In Git, you work uh, on a local copy of your files that is Git actually operates on the files themselves. It will change change your files and restore them to and from different points in time. Um, you don't need any kind of server or anything to begin working with Git, which is why it's so useful for uh, everyday projects. So how does Git fit in with your existing data? Well, if this is our project and A and B are two files in a project folder, Git sits alongside these. And when there's a Git folder in, a, in a, another folder, the uh, original folder, in this case project, is known as a git repository. So everything alongside the git folder are uh, managed by git. When you start a new project, you use init. Init adds that git folder and does some setup and then you're ready to start using git with, uh, with those files. If, you're, um, if you want to start working on an existing project, you'll clone that, it will copy those files to your computer and then you can begin working on them. To get the full history of a project, you use the log. It shows you everything that's happened over time and is really useful for getting, for getting a history of everything that's happened. When you've changed something, you add a file um, to the stage. What this means is you're telling Git to that you want uh, the file, the, the changes you've made to be in the next snapshot that you take of the project. A snapshot um, is also known as a commit and is a really important um, uh, a really important aspect of Git is the, the fundamental unit of, uh, of Git, really. If you want to see what's going on in a project at a particular time, you use the status. Uh, this can tell you what's changed, what Git's not tracking, uh, and where you are in relation to other people working on the project. 
When you've made some changes, you commit them, and this is the mo uh, possibly the most important thing in Git. You commit a change, and at that point, it's saved, and you can always get back to it. And when you commit, you leave a message with that commit so that you know what you were doing and why you were doing it at a particular time. When you commit, you commit to a branch, and we're going to branching later on. You can use the diff to compare different versions. So if you are, if you'd like to, you can compare what you're currently working on to how it was a week ago, and the diff will show you that. If you want to get back to a particular point in time, you use checkout, and then to merge work you've done some, and then to, or even to combine work that you've done uh, somewhere else back into what you're doing now, you use merge. I won't actually go into merging and checking out in this talk, but uh, there's lots of good resources online about that. If you'd like to get changes other people have made, because a really important part of Git is collaboration, if you'd like to get their changes, you pull from uh, a remote. Um, and if you'd like to uh, put your changes back so that other people can uh, work on them and adapt, adapt from them, uh, or just to save to somewhere else, you use push. And as I've already said, you uh, remote is the uh, is somewhere else that the same files, the same Git repository, uh, the same project exists. So back to this idea of a snapshot. In Git, you store a snapshot with a message, uh, and this represents the way uh, the state of a project at a particular time. Over time you add more projects and add more messages. Uh, and just for reference in these diagrams time is going down the page. So at some point you might like to uh, work on a different idea. In this, uh, in this case I've created a new commit with the message experiment. But what's important about this is that it's in pink. And it's in pink because you can think of that piece of work as being separate from the green line of work. They're related in that um, C3 uh, is just changes to files that were in a particular state at C2, but we can commit um, uh, to the green line as well as the as well as the pink line. So um, I'll just change that diagram slightly so to make it a bit clearer. You can see what we end up with is two simultaneous lines of work. These are called branches, and uh, are the way you manage working on two things at the same time. It's important to note that at any one time you you only see the files uh, for one of these um, one of these snapshots. You don't it's not uh, you don't multiply the number of Git files or Git repositories for every single one of these different um, points. Uh, you only see one at, uh, at any one time, and each of these boxes is a commit. The process of um, splitting out the lines of work. So here we, here we've gone C two and to C3, which is a different color, and it's on a different branch, it's called branching. The other thing you'll notice here is these arrows. This uh, gives an indication of how Git um, works internally, but all you need to know is that every uh, commit um, also contains information about which commit was its parent, which means you can track the history of a Git project back from any commit right back to the beginning. So here's the combined uh, end result of all those actions we've just taken. So now let's take a look at branching. Uh, as already said, each of these vertical lines of uh, work is called a branch. And in this case, I've named the green line master and the pink line idea. Actually, branches are just pointers to a particular commit. That is, a named, uh, you can name a branch, and all the name does is tell Git what the end of the, uh, what the most recent commit on a particular branch is. It's kind of like a leaf on the end of the, of the branch of a tree. Because each of the commits points back at its parent, you can track from the end uh, or the latest commit all the way back to the beginning of the history of a Git project. And in this way, Git is kind of like a tree. So here we have two branches. The master branch um, uh, pointer points at C4, and the idea branch pointer points at C5, and we can track the history of both of those back by looking at the parent of each commit that we get to. So here's how you, uh, how you what actually happens when you branch. If I'm working on master and I want to branch uh, to idea, I create a new branch. Um, and you can look up this, the uh, command for doing that. And actually all that does is create a new pointer so that master and idea are both pointing at the same commit, C2. Then if I'm working on the idea branch and I commit, the idea branch pointer moves so that it points at the commit that I've just made. You can see here that master is still pointing at C2, but idea is pointing at C3, and that's um, it's really important. I've all just I'll just alter this diagram um, so uh, so it's a bit clearer or a bit more tidy. In fact, if we 
um, move back to working on master, I can make another commit that moves the master branch pointer. So it's now pointing at C4, and you can see this uh, parallel line of work emerging. And then I can switch back to idea, maybe make some more changes, a new commit, and again, now we're back where we were originally with the master branch pointing at C4 and the idea branch pointing at C5. So let's take a look at what's in a commit. The first thing in a commit is a SHA. This is a, um, a representation of the status of all the files in a particular commit, uh, but condensed down to 32 characters. If any character in any of the files changes, then this SHA uh, it will not, then the SHAs will not match up and that's how Git knows that a file has changed. Also in a commit is the name and date um, that the commit was made and then the message that you leave. And this is, you can see here that we have a, t a title for our commit or a summary for our commit and then some more information. The more information you can put in a commit message, the better because it helps people you're working with. So let's take a look at how you might use Git. There's lots of different tools for using Git. Um, Git box, Git X, GitHub, and Tower. I personally originally learned from Tower. And if you are if you don't particularly like using the terminal or the command line, you're not used to it, then I'd really recommend using a GUI tool for learning how to use Git. Um, it is possible to use the terminal, it's what I use, but I definitely couldn't use the terminal when I started um, learning Git. Whereas now, uh, after using a GUI tool and learning the different terminology, I'm now happy in the terminal. The terminal's not just for this guy. Um, it actually is more powerful than the or the most of the GUI tools, but for everyday work, you just need a GUI. The good thing about GUI is that it will teach you Git because you get icons uh, that sit alongside the verb, the different verbs that we've already been through in pink, uh, and you get a visual representation of what's going on. It'll really enable you to get your head around what's going on in Git. So now here's some useful links that uh, you, uh, you might want to use if you want to find out more about Git. The top three are for the Git website, gitscm.com. Um, the second one down is the documentation, the reference documentation, and the third is ProGit, which is a book by Scott Chacon who works for GitHub. It's really good, uh, gives you a great introduction to Git and takes you through everything you need to know. Um, and the stuff, um, there's a lot of stuff in there that I haven't um, gone near yet, like setting up servers um, that you might need to do at some point if you get really into it. GitRef is a reference for everyday Git use. Uh, it doesn't contain some of the more esoteric uh, uses, but it just has a good reference for things like committing status, add, uh, the log, all that kind of stuff that's really useful. And the final link is uh, an interactive introduction to Git that um, talks you through everything you need to do in a time in a uh, command line or terminal simulator so that um, you can get a feel for how that works without actually operating on any of your files and with a a friendly tutorial to walk you through it. Uh, this is me, you can find me on the internet. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to ask any questions or get in contact with me, that's um, my details. And yeah, again, thank you very much for watching and I hope this helped you understand some more about Git.